Hey guys, welcome back to Kobla Creations. We're doing another Sunday Q&A from your guys' reptile comments, or YouTube comments. Yep, Both. And, and Facebook maybe, maybe. We may take one off Facebook. Sometimes. Um, so, hey, let's just get right into it. Yep. Let me go ahead and pull these uh, YouTube comments up and let's see what you guys have got to say this week. So our first one is going to go from Darlene, Darlene Cronk. Um, Darlene writes, I have a bearded dragon that hasn't been basking. It's 88 on the basking side, 77 on the non-basking side. I can bring him out and he will run around. I don't understand why he is not basking. Love you guys. Aww. Uh, honestly, if a dragon's not basking, it usually means that he's too hot. Um, but your temperature's seem to be okay but it's probably your thermometer is not reading correctly yeah i, I mean that's a possibility at, at 88 degrees um on her basking side i mean 88 that's that's pretty warm um i wouldn't think that the dragon would spend a great deal of time basking at that temperature but like you said there is a possibility um, I, I always like to double check and then uh, double check again your temperatures and things like that. Like we sell this uh, Vivarium Electronics little uh, thermometer, thermostat, or yeah, thermometer, hydrometer. Um, and, and these are fine to use. Um, in fact, you know, it, it's got the sensing probe and all that. But something that I also like to use to double check is just one of these right here. This is an Accurite with uh, temperature, humidity. Um, we use these to uh, gauge like temperature and humidity in our incubators. But you could take one of these and set it underneath your basking light and uh, just double check. Also, you, you can set it pretty much anywhere that you want to get a second opinion, so to speak, on your basking and your median temperatures. Um, you can buy these at Walmart. This particular brand is called the Accurite. And uh, these guys are extremely accurate as far as I can tell. I mean, we'll put two or three of these side by side. They read the exact same thing. So I believe they're pretty accurate. You can get them at Walmart if you... Uh, for whatever reason you decide you want to go to Walmart, I usually never decide that personally. <laughs> but anyway, but you can get them at Walmart. You can probably order them online. But this brand here, uh, once again, is called an Accurite. So if you want to double check those temperatures and make sure. Um, but I don't think there's a problem. 88 degrees, if the dragon's not basking, I mean, surely uh, he just doesn't feel the need to yeah, and I mean, a lot of times if you're, you know, if you live somewhere where it is really hot, maybe he's, you know, the temperature in the room is also really hot in the afternoon. You know, sometimes my dragons don't even bask because out here in the afternoon, it gets really, really hot. So they're usually on the cooler side of their cage, but in the morning they're basking. So, um, yeah, I mean, they don't have to be basking all day long. It's, it's normal for them to kind of go up. back and forth and figure out what they want. So, yeah. And another thing about, um, about reptiles is reptiles warm up very, very quickly. Um, at least all of the normal colorations. Now, if you're talking about animals like albinos, it'll take them a little longer because of their lack of pigment. Uh, but most reptiles warm up very, very quickly and they cool down very, very slowly. And that's why we always caution people, if you're gonna air in your temperatures, you need to air toward the cooler side and not toward the hotter side. You can do more damage by overheating a reptile than you can by keeping one at a slightly cooler temperature. So anyway, um, Darlene, thank you for your question, hon. I hope this answers it. And um, let's see who else. This is uh, Vader. 1005 gaming <laughs> he said how do you control your humidity inside i live in the southeast too and my humidity has been a nightmare and my girl is coughing some oh you know the only time we have ever had any type of respiratory issues with a bearded dragon it was because of high humidity um and that many many years ago we had to treat a respiratory infection um, or we had a dragon that was actually coughing mucus. You remember that? That was Spike. And that was Spike when he was yep. a baby. Exactly. You can't see him in the video, but he's right over there. So that's, that's been a long time. Um, so how to control humidity inside. Okay, Vader, I, I know that's probably not your real name. So I, I'm going to address this like this. First of all, um, if your humidity is high enough that your bearded dragon is coughing, you need to correct the humidity in your home, first of all, because... 
Um, generally speaking, the humidity inside your home needs to be somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. If your humidity is higher than that, you're going to end up with, uh, you know, some issues with things inside your home, rusting, um, and all. So they generally recommend inside a house your humidity to be between 30 and 50 percent. Um, if your humidity is higher than that, which I'm assuming it is now, like here in our shop. Uh, our bearded dragons have been bred in the southeast, so our dragons are used to a little bit higher humidity than probably some that were uh, bred out on the west coast, like Arizona or somewhere like that. Um, our dragons can tolerate higher humidity, like the humidity in this room right now, where a lot of our dragons is 62% in here, and we don't worry about it because... Um, as long as the dragon's terrariums have good ventilation, you have good airflow, dragons can tend to have a little higher humidity. The problem comes when they have humidity uh, and no airflow. In other words, if you're keeping them like in the box style cages that has very little screening for airflow, you have high humidity there, you're going to have some issues because that humidity has nowhere to go and there's no fresh airflow. So, um, I'm assuming that's probably maybe the kind of setup this guy's got where uh, yeah. his humidity's up. So the, the first thing you want to do is get the humidity down in your home, period. You can do that by a couple ways. Number one is air conditioning. Um, air conditioning will lower the humidity in your home if you have central heat and air. Um, heaters will likewise do it in the, uh, in the wintertime. Um, the other thing you can do is put a fan in the room. If there's airflow circulating in the room, um, you're going to have less humidity than if the air is just still. Uh, the other thing, you could go to Home Depot, and I don't remember the name of these. They, they sell these, basically it's like a uh, silicone gel pillow is kind of what it looks like. And you set it in a room, and if it's a large room, you may need more than one. But basically it's for like a, a cigar closets, things like that. But it will absorb the moisture out of the air. It'll swell this uh, the silicone up, lowering the humidity. You can look those up um, on online. I believe Home Depot actually carries those, but they will lower the humidity in a room too. Um, some people have even asked me before, can I put that inside the cage? Can I put those silicone um, blanket uh, little pillow things inside my dragon's cage? I personally wouldn't recommend doing that because your dragon could get curious, chew on that thing. Uh, if he rips it and ends up eating some of that silicone, I'm not really sure that that would be the healthiest thing. Yeah, just to be on the safe side. Yeah, yeah, you probably don't want to be feeding that to your dragon. I think we got one back there that's nodding his head in approval. Um, <laughs> yeah, and one thing you could do for like the inside of the cage is to not keep a water bowl on the inside because dragons really don't even drink that much water anyways. They are a desert dwelling species. Um, when they're babies, I usually just spray them on the head with a spray bottle um, every day to every other day. And then as they become adults, they won't even drink that because they just simply don't need it. So their moisture actually comes from their salads. I'll make a salad for them and then I'll spray it with water. And to them, that's just enough water that they need. And then I'll also soak them about once a week. Um, so they don't need a water bowl. So you can take the water bowl completely out of the cage. And then when you put your salad in there, maybe only let them have it for an hour or two because you know, after two hours, if they don't want their salad, they're not going to eat it. So you can take that out of the cage so it's not sitting there all day long raising the humidity because a salad will actually raise, um, raise the humidity a lot higher than you think it will. Yeah, it will. So those are two things you could do for the inside of the enclosure. And yeah, like we said, you know, making sure that you have plenty of airflow. Like the cage behind me right here doesn't even have a lid on it um, because she, I mean, her... She has a little climbing branch in there, but it's not tall enough for her to jump out and dragons can't climb glass. Uh, but if you have one that you, you know, you're a bit skeptical of, like this little male over here that's always moving around in our background, I keep a lid on him because he will jump a little bit higher. She's more lazy. So, yeah. so good airflow. Keep your air conditioner and your heater on. Put a fan in the room. All those things should help out. Um, and if not, go check out those silicone things at Home Depot. And just set it somewhere near your dragon's cage. And uh, also, once again, make sure you're using something that's you know that, that's going to give you a good quality readout. Um, you can get these on our website. These right here, you can get at Walmart. Uh, make sure you know. But like I said again, if if you got good airflow, humidity shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if your bearded dragon is coughing some. 
Um, you know, you want to keep an eye on that. If you start seeing mucus, certainly you're going to want to get that dragon uh, some antibiotics or something. So uh, anyway, hopefully not. I don't like to use uh, any type of medication, particularly antibiotics with reptiles, but sometimes it does become necessary. So anyway, we're going to roll down here. Next comment. Let me see. I got to scroll down this so I can see it better. Uh, this is from Leslie Miller. Leslie Miller writes, Okay, my only question, we've had many dragons over the years. Our latest one, Garcia, is horrible. <laughs> it's a horrible dragon. He's misbehaving. Says he bites like crazy. I guess he is horrible. <laughs> I've had he a couple like that before. So. He tries constantly to get away if we hold him. He's done this since he was tiny. We try to hold him every day. My husband has not given up on him. And still takes him out about five times a week. After getting bit so many times, I've given up. Is he just a freak or will he ever tame down? I miss a dragon that sits on my shoulder all chill. I bet she does. Yeah. So, <laughs> I will say, I think like 99% of the time, yes, dragons do calm down. Because I have yeah. dealt with a lot of... I guess what you would call freaks uh, of, of dragons. <laughs> we got um, one now. Yeah, we do. We, we have do. one now. Uh, we, ha we have one that's named Diablo, and uh, he's a he's a work in progress. Yes, he is. <laughs> he, he is. Uh... Um, you can wear, I mean, if you're a little bit, you know, scared of getting bit, you can wear gloves or something to protect your hands so that if he bites, you don't even feel it. Therefore, you're not afraid to go in there and handle him. And then once he's used to it, you can take the gloves off and just use your bare hands. Um but yeah, I think that when they're younger, sometimes they can be really difficult to deal with. But usually once they reach adulthood, they get a little bit more lazy and a lot more laid back, if you will. So just be patient and keep going in there, keep, keep handling them, and eventually he will calm down because... I mean, pretty much all of ours. Have. We have this this one again, this male back here, this yellow one that this walks around. His head right yeah, now. he he was awful when he was younger, but I can go in there now and pick him up. But when he was like a little juvenile, he bit me all the time. So yeah, it's you know, and here's the thing, um, Leslie. I, I want to say this to you because dragons are not mean. They're not uh, aggressive. Uh, the proper word is frightened. Uh, so you have to be, when, when dragons behave this way, it's not because they're mean. It's not because they're, you know, they don't like you. Um, it's because they're frightened. Basically, when it comes to the animal uh, mindset, you know, animals have this mindset that when they see something living, it's either small enough that I can eat it or it's large enough that it can eat me. So when they look at something like a cricket, a roach, a mill, and they say, hey, it's small enough, I can eat it. Therefore, it's prey, or it's prey. If they see something as large as you and I, they say, it's large enough to eat me. Therefore, it's a predator. And they're frightened by that because they simply don't want to be on the menu. Yeah. So you got to understand, first of all, that your dragon's not being mean. He's, he's, he's not a freak. Um, he's afraid. And there's a, there's a huge difference between that. So that'll help you understand a little bit about what's going on. He's, he's, he's fearful for his life. And um, you have to be patient enough to build up a trust relationship with him. Now, if he bites you, it's because that's his first line of defense. That's really the only thing he can do to protect himself is to bite you in hopes to get away. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this to you, too, and this is something I advise a lot of people. Don't give up on them. You, you mentioned that your husband's not giving up on him, but after getting bit many times, you've given up. Here's what you've just told that dragon. You've told that dragon that that bad behavior that he's exhibiting is working. It's just like a, raising a child. You know, if you have a child, you take him to Walmart and he screams and throws a fit over a toy and you buy him that toy, you just taught that child that that bad behavior works. It got him what he wanted. What I used to tell my son, he would say, my oldest son, Dylan, would come to me and say, Dad, if I'll behave, will I get a red ball? And I said, no, I'll give you a red butt if you don't behave. But I never reward bad behavior. 
Um, and, and that goes with a dragon as well. If the dragon acts up and he's hissing and he's biting and then you leave him alone, you've just given him what he wanted and therefore you're teaching him that his bad behavior is, is getting him what he wants and therefore you're rewarding that bad behavior. No matter how he acts, slap some gloves on, reach in, pick him up, hold him. Don't let him think that by being bad or aggressive, he's going to get what he wants. Because the goal here is so much interaction between you and the dragon that the dragon stops seeing you as a threat. He stops being afraid of you and then settles down. Then you can have that dragon that'll sit on your shoulder and simply chill. Right, yeah. And also be careful how you're picking him up and how you're putting them back in the cage. Um, I think sometimes people can get a little bit afraid when their dragon's mouth is wide open. They want to kind of reach it back and pick them up or snatch them up really quickly. But you don't want to pick them up in a way that you think a predator would in the wild. So what I would recommend is just putting some gloves on, maybe scooping your hand in the front and kind of like encourage them to scoot up on your hand. And then Mm -hmm. whenever you put them in the cage, just, you know, whenever they're sitting on your hand, just place your hand in the cage and just wait till he kind of walks off on his own and so that way he knows whenever he sees you if if i'm going to be picked up i'm not going to be handled roughly so and also too if a dragon's sitting there and you reach down from above it's yeah it's it's like like a bird bird of prey reaching so yeah like she said go in toward the front that's good that's good advice yeah i I might pay you more (laughs) (laughs) anyway leslie we hope that answers your question um, and uh, just, hey, you know what? Be patient, but be persistent. That's that's the key. All right, let's go to this next one. Now, here's a familiar face, or, well, not a face, but familiar. Minion Museum. <laughs> this is a uh, young lady who, um, she has followed our channel for a long time. I'm not going to say her name because she may not want her name out there on social media. Uh, but this young lady has followed our channel, our Facebook page, for a long time. She has been... Um, a repeat customer of ours, so hats off to you, young lady. We appreciate it so much. Um, but her YouTube handle is Minion Museum. That's cool, like the minions. Mm-hmm. I'm just me. And Maybe. she writes, uh, provided the husbandry is correct, the animal should eat as it's supposed to. Now, I think that she wrote this as a reply to someone else's comment. She said, but I've noticed... If you put a little crested gecko diet on the veggies, that motivates them. Now, I know this isn't a question, but I wanted to put this in this video because she makes a really cool point here. I've never done this before, but we hear all this stuff today about salad toppers, putting mm-hmm. you know stuff on top of your bearded dragon salad to entice them to eat. Um, and there's some products out there that I think contain way too much sugar. Uh, to be used as a topper. Um, so she she mentions this here, and, and she said, uh, the animal should eat as it's supposed to, and she's exactly right. If your husbandry, your temperatures, your humidity, all that stuff is even remotely accurate, animals are going to eat. I mean, it's, it's a natural instinct to them. It's something they're supposed to do. Um, she said, but she's noticed if you put a little crested gecko diet on the vegetables, that'll motivate them to eat them. So for those of you guys who have bearded dragons and crested geckos, there's a tip for you guys to try that. Now, I, I'm going to say we've never tried that. Yeah, I don't I've know if this before, works or not, but to be honest with you, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Yeah. I don't see. So anyway, hey, listen, um, Lita, I'm going to just call your first name, not your last name. But Lita, thank you so much for this tip. Um, we do appreciate it. Uh, I, by the way, the crested gecko diet that she's talking about here. Um, I'm assuming she's meaning sprinkle this on in its powder form because most of this cre- uh, yeah. crested gecko diet, uh, it, it comes in like a powder and you have to mix water in it and make like a paste, like about the consistency of ketchup uh, for your crested geckos to eat. I'm assuming she's talking about in its dry form, take it out, sprinkle it. That's what I was thinking, like sprinkle it on their salad or something or even on their insects. I don't know. Yeah. So those of you guys who are using salad toppers and spending a lot of money on that, if you're already feeding your geckos, uh, crested gecko diet, uh, write in. Let us know if this works. Hey, we we may, uh, excuse me, (laughs) we we may devote a whole video to this. Um, 
And uh, anyway, so yeah, once again, Lita, thank you so much, Minion Museum, for sharing that tip with our with us and with our viewers. We appreciate that. So, um, well, hey, that's going to wrap it up. Although I do have one other question I need to put in here. Somebody wrote me on Facebook and said, every one of your videos you're drinking, what are you drinking? And um, it, it all depends. I mean, well, like, so that, I don't know if you... I can show you this or not. Depends on the time of day. Uh, they also mentioned that you never change switch cups. We have other cups. I just, never wash it either. Just, <laughs> we have other cups. It's just for some reason every time we film, well, I, I usually have my blue one. Today I would switched it out. But someone was like, do you guys ever use different cups? My <laughs> other daughter, not her, not uh, my oldest daughter actually bought me this cup for Christmas. I thought it was really cool and I like it. It's like the Yeti cups. Um, and, and I actually like it. But it depends on what time of day it is as to what I'm drinking. If we're filming this before about 10 a.m., I'm, I'm drinking coffee. coffee. If any other time of the day, I'm probably drinking water like I'm drinking now. The only um, things we drink around here are water, coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, but water and sweet tea. So when we're filming, it's like one of those three yeah, things. Yeah, it, it could be sweet tea. It could be water. Um, it could be coffee. Yeah. yeah. I guarantee it ain't going to be Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it ain't going to be Bud Light So for those of y'all who are wondering You know I'm not boycotting Bud Light Because I never drank But but that's like the I mean You know Come on man Calling Bud Light beer Is like calling He who can't be named on YouTube A woman Oh yeah I mean It's not real beer Anyway Thank know. you guys for watching <laughs> You guys have a great day. Thank y'all for watching. See ya.